What's going on guys, my name is Manny, welcome back to the channel. In this episode we're going to take a closer look at our center of gravity and the basics of body positioning. In the last technique episode we discussed how good technique makes us climb harder in general and more specific the role of good footwork in the technique puzzle. If you haven't seen the episode check it out here. Today I want to talk about our center of gravity and how we can use body positioning in order to make our climbing as efficient as possible. Let's start with the basics. What is your center of gravity and where is it? The center of gravity of a body is a point at which its resultant weight force attaches, representing all the small little masses that constitute the body. Thus, in a uniform gravitational field, the center of gravity equals the center of mass. Don't worry, you don't need to memorize that to climb freaking hard. What we should keep in mind though is where our center of gravity resides and what implications on climbing technique this might have. In the average human being the center of gravity lies behind the navel, pretty much in the middle of our body. So now that we know what and where it is, what shall we do with it? The main message that I want to get across in this video is always try to move your center of gravity as close to the wall as possible. Now there are some exceptions to this rule which I'm going to address in future videos but in principle this is one of the major foundations of an efficient climbing style. Let me explain why. Last time I told you that a good technique enables you to translocate forces to lower, stronger regions of the body where they can be handled more easily than in your fingers. So exactly this is happening if we are moving our center of gravity towards the wall because close to the wall always means above your feet. To give you a little bit of a demonstrative example, in this clip here the effect is so extreme that I can let go of my hands completely. All of my weight is carried by my feet. That body position also gives us a little bit of a glimpse uh, what implications this on the use of our extremities has. Let's compare these two climbers. The left climber climbs like most beginners on bent arms and straight legs, while the right climber climbs on straight arms and bent legs. The right climber has a more efficient climbing style here. He places his center of gravity so low and so close to the wall that almost all of his weight is literally sitting on his feet. And all of the movement, all of the momentum comes from his legs, pushing him towards the next hold. While the right climber has to pull with his arms and hands a lot in order to make moves. And that costs more energy in relevant structures like forearms and shoulders for example. So far we looked at relatively flat walls, but in principle the same laws can be applied to steeper terrain like overhangs as well. Let's take a look at these two climbers. The center of gravity of this guy is far from close to the wall. His ass is literally sticking out, it's not very pleasing to look at. As a consequence, his weight pulls him off the footholds quite often. He loses his feet. And that of course costs insane amounts of energy. On the contrary, the right climber keeps his center of gravity close to the wall allowing him to put more weight on his feet, making him not only more stable on the footholds but also relieving his arms at the same time. Also note the use of extremities in this example. In the overhang both climbers climb on straight arms, but the left guy, the beginner, climbs also on straight legs, causing his unfavorable body position or as we'd like to say, his ass to stick out. The right climber climbs on bent legs, which enables him to literally pull his center of gravity towards the wall. So now that we know the benefits of this law, I briefly want to talk about two, in my opinion, highly underrated physical capabilities which we should have in order to execute it. 
And the first one here is flexibility. Flexibility in the hips and in the leg department. This one is of special importance when it comes to flat terrain because it enables us to really sit on those high footholds relieving a lot of weight from our arms and it's also amazing to find awesome rest positions and stuff like that. And we can see this of course a lot in female climbers who are naturally gifted with the high flexibility of the hips and the legs. But not only there, also a really really strong climber, Adam Ondra, has an amazing flexibility and it's really great to look at him climbing. Check out his videos if you haven't already. And yeah, try to learn from him, try, try to learn from his flexibility. He steps really high and he rests really on high footholds and stuff like that, sitting on his feet, which of course is very efficient. So he should be definitely a role model here and a great motivation for us to improve our own flexibility. But when the projects become more and more overhanging, we do not only need flexibility, but also something else called body strength in order to keep our weight close to the wall. And the major muscle groups that are responsible for body strength are the glutes and back. If your feet slip a lot in overhanging terrain, body strength might be your weakness. Now lucky as we are, there are some exercises which are specifically designed to address body strength, but that's a subject for another video. And that's already it for this video guys, leave a like if you got something from it, tell me your opinion in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for future technique episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, bye!